Hello, and welcome back to the 12th day of 50 Days with God. We are often worried about so many things in life, and then later on we realize that we shouldn't even have worried about them. Yes, follow along with us to find out how to stop worrying about everything. Hello, welcome once again, my friend, for today's study. I'm your friend, Arnolfo Cortez, evangelist from Philippines. For today's study, we will be discussing about how to stop worrying about everything. You know, my friend, there are different opinions about worrying. For people have many worries in life. And according to the study is that worrying is a universal experience that we all have and we all feel. We sometimes worried many things about minor things and those things beyond our control. Let's say, for example, we, we worried about what we drink, what we eat, what we dress, what kind of shoes we are going to wear, where to go, what kinds of car we are going to use, where to meet our friends, and we worry about situation, about conditions of the weather situation, the traffic on the streets, and some we worried about biggest or big things in life, about terrorism, maybe a plot, politics, and many more. Well, there are many types of worries, but most common worries in our lives may affect so much in our health. Because there are worries that so-called chronic worries, that these worries will stay at least weeks in our lives, and this will lead to anxiety, and next to anxiety, will lead to stress and many died because of so-called killer stress. And everything that most of the people worried about are all imaginary, all in the minds, and cause and affect so much with their health of the body because we all know that 90% of all sicknesses originated from the minds and according to the research there are three types of worries in this world most common that almost all walks of life have is the so-called worries about something we need to face most of the people getting worried about something that they need to face for tomorrow, for a couple of days, for a weeks and months. But these types of worries, my friend, can easily be addressed. Because of all these worries, we need to think about what can be the worst thing happen if these things be done or happen. And for example, a team of group or a group of people decided to have a swim for their events. We can see at their face that some of them are very happy for that decision, but many, maybe some of men in the group are being worried so much. I remember when we have decided in our team. When I was in my high school life, when, they decide, when we decided to have a swim, I'm very much worried because I know that when we are having that event, I know for myself that I am not ready. I am not ready to face something like swimming because I know that I don't know how to swim. And pity 
I am pretty sure that most or if not all common worries are something like that. When we don't know how to do it, how to face it, we worry too much to the extent that even to sleep, we cannot sleep because of that worries. And that will affect badly to our health. It means that when we worry something we need to face and we are not ready then to address that kind of worries is to have a focus of mind and to prepare and once you focus and you are prepared then nothing to worry about this kind of worries so nothing to worry because you are ready and you are prepared. Most common people say, when I'm worried, I get ready. But it's, um, it's an opposite. In order for us to stop worrying many things, small, big things in life, we need to address it. We need to prepare for it. And then... When we are prepared to face everything because we are ready for everything and we know for ourselves that we are getting ready and we are prepared, nothing to worry. We need to be ready. We need to be prepared and ready. So nothing to worry. That should be. The next kind of worry is we worry about something beyond our control. Some people get worried about terrorism. They worried about bad weather condition. They worried about traffic condition. Of which everything that that kind of situation is beyond our control. And why we worry about those things which we cannot undo? Because they are beyond our control. So how to address about this? Is to think the most. What can the most things that possibly happen if that something happen? And you will discover that nothing to worry because that is beyond our control. And the third types of worries, the third type of worry that most of the people also have is the what if in life. Common people worry about what if she will not agree? What if they will not accept me? What if, and because of so many what if, many people destroy their lives. They cannot do something good and nice anymore because of that feeling. Because of that worry of so many things. What if in life? But thank my friend to address these matters and these kinds of worries. What is the most possibly Things can happen, can happen if these things should happen. For example, what if she will not agree? And then what if, if she will not agree? What will happen next? Only that, she will not agree. It will not cost your life. Not even one here of your head be taken because of that. So it means that to worry, to worry many things and people get worried and wearied because of that things is something that needs to be addressed so that we can live happily ever after. But what are the recommendations from the Bible? Because most of the people, if not all, worried many, many things, if not all, almost everything. And how to stop it so that we can live a happy and joyous life full of confidence. We can influence others to 
a better way of living and we can have the influence that we can be a medium also that they can live a happy life, a better life with their family. Now I would like to read recommendations from the Bible, my friend. And according to what is written in the Bible, to avoid chronic and all types of worries, here is the recommendation from the Bible. The first one is written in Matthew chapter 6 verse 26 to 33. The first thing to do is to look and observe. What to look and observe? He said, look the fowls of the air. Look the birds. Behold them flying. They don't have barns. They don't sow and harvest. They don't have anything. But they keep on singing early in the morning before going to sleep at night. They keep on singing. Why they are very happy? Because they knew nature teaches them that God in heaven is the great provider. And even they have no barns, God in heaven feed them. Even if they sow not, they have food for every day's need. And they keep on singing early in the morning as we can hear them chirping in their branches of the tree, in the branch of the trees. They keep on chirping. Wow, it's so wonderful to observe, to behold, to look for them and learn to trust the great provider of everything. Friends, they don't think of worries. They just keep on trusting and singing melody every day. What a wonderful life. If we can have a life like of the birds, keep on praising, chirping, singing early in the morning and in the evening before going to sleep, we can have a life like a life more than a billionaire because there are a lot of billionaire millionaire but they cannot sing because they have worries in life life full of worries is life full of unhappiness another thing is that observe the lilies which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature. And yet, I tell you, that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these lilies. Could you imagine, my friend, the nature speaks of the love of God. What a wonderful thing. They grow, they bear fruit in due season, they have full of confidence that everything in these lives was provided by our Heavenly Father, the great Creator and a great provider of every creature. What a wonderful recommendation from the Bible. And the second recommendation is us in prayer and once you ask it will be given unto you well let me read you my friend john chapter 11 verse 22 but i know that even now whatsoever thou wilt ask of god god will give it unto you again but I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it unto you. What a wonderful life. We can ask 
and the Lord will provide. We can ask and He will give to us whatsoever we ask in Him. Why worry when we can pray? When we cannot do it because this is beyond our hand to do it, we can close our hand, my friend, and we can pray. And the Lord will give it unto us. Remember, when we cannot do it by our hand because it is beyond our control, we can just fold our hand and pray and our heavenly father will do it for you and for me another wonderful text that i will be reading now can it can be found in john 14 verse 13 and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that will i do that the father may be glorified in the son what shall we do my friend Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, in the name of Jesus, that will I do. Jesus will do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. What a wonderful assurance, my friend. We need not to worry about everything in the future, in the negative future life, but we need to trust, to ask the Lord in prayer. That whatsoever and anything we will ask in His name, He will do it so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. John 14 verse 14 If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. This is an assurance of the Son of God who became man for you and for me, who died in our stead, so that we may live full of happiness, full of joy, and full of confidence, that we can ask in His name, and He will do it, my friend. John 15 verse 7, If ye abide in me, and I abide in you, and my words abide in you. Ye shall ask whatsoever ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Friends, I think that this recommendation from the Bible is more powerful than worries we have. Yes, of course, there are bigger, there are smaller worries in life, but we can still trust and believe that we have a bigger God than them all. And our God can provide everything if we trust and if we abide in Him. Our lives will, will become a life full of assurance and not only an assurance, full of insurance that He will do it for you and for me. We need only to trust like a little child. Friend, I would like to end this study today by a simple story. I remember, I remember a little child, five or six years of age, when he, his mother gave birth, his mother died, and so he was under the care of his father since he was very little child and he completely trust and believe his father's care and because of the necessities of life when this little boy nearly six years of age the father went to work every day and they agreed that his father will left him at home every day. His father worked maybe three hours away from the house by car. But one day, 
neighbor surrounding them scream because the house of this young little child was burned. And the neighbor knew that inside the house, the child was. And when the fire started in the kitchen, burning the house, the child woke up and he knew that the fire is burning. And he cannot go out anymore because the door was trapped with fire. So he climbed to the next level of the house because they have a big house, a little bit bigger. He went to the second level. And after the fire burned the second level, he went up to the third level. And all the neighbors shouted, Young child, are you there inside? You can jump and we will help you save your life. Many neighbors shouted, ordering the child to jump. But the child is waiting one more voice. But the fire is burning the third floor. Next to the fourth floor. <coughs> Excuse me, my friends. And the last level of the house, the fifth floor, the child went there. He cannot go up anymore. No more level of the house to go. And the neighbors scream for fear that the child may be burned also. But suddenly, a car stopped. And a small man who happened to be the father of the child came out and rushed to the burning house. He shouted, My son, are you still there? The son understood and knew very well the sounds of the voice of the father. And you know the son replied, my dad, I am here, but it's very hot now. I cannot even see you because of the smoke. The father ordered his child, My son, I am your father. You cannot see me, but I can see you there. My son, Listen to me. Jump and I will catch you. The son replied up there in the fifth level of the house. My father, my dad, I cannot see you. But still, I can hear your voice. Catch me. I will jump. I will follow the order of your voice. A few moments later, the son was saved in the father's arm. Friends, I know that we have many problems in life, but we need not to worry. As long as we know and understand and recognize the voice of the Father in heaven, ordering us to follow His voice, to follow His biddings, to follow His guidance, we can all be safe. We cannot see our Father in heaven, but we can still recognize His voice amidst of so many voices in this world. Don't ever forget, my friends. Trust and don't worry. Ask and give everything to our Father. Remember, why worry when we can pray? God bless you, my friend. It's my wish for you today. Prayer is such a powerful tool not only for overcoming worry, 
but also for solving everyday problems. Prayer is so important. Now join us again next time in the next video with another important topic that we will hear entitled, What will the world be like after the pandemic? Continue joining us throughout these 50 days with God. Hi, my name is Erika Murua. In this conference, I'd like to talk a little bit about immunity and how to strengthen our immune system. What is immunity? Immunity is the ability of, our, of an organism to resist a particular infection or toxin. And the immune system does a remarkable job of defending our bodies against microorganisms that can cause diseases. It has a complex, complex mechanism. To be able to work properly, the system requires balance and harmony. How can we achieve this balance? The most important thing is that we have to consider our lifestyle. If we follow general good health guidelines, we can maintain our system strong and healthy. Harvard University recommends seven healthy living strategies to boost our immune systems. The first is don't smoke because smoking affects our immune system by increasing the susceptibility of infections like pneumonia and influenza, and also lowers our protective antioxidant in our blood, that is vitamin C. We have to eat a healthy diet, especially high fruits and vegetables, raw vegetables. We have to Eat a variety of them, like a salad with two or three different vegetables that you can eat raw, not the traditional that you always use. You have to uh, explore and use different colors, different um, kinds of vegetables. And also you can use it uh, as a juicing, like green juices are really good and powerful antioxidants. We can use also um, the um, blender to do smoothies with fruits and uh, always remember to use it raw and is in the possible use it organic or biological um, we have to exercise regularly regular exercise improve our immunity and um, because increases our blood flow, reduces our, the stress that we have, reduce inflammation, and can strengthen our antibodies. We have to exercise two, three, four times a week, at least 30 minutes uh, every time. We have to keep a healthy weight. Also, we have to get adequate sleep. At least seven hours every night improves improves our health. Other important thing that we have to keep in mind is to wash our hands um, regularly, frequently with soap and water. Especially in this time of pandemic, we have to keep this council active and we're already more conscious now about washing our hands. But remember always wash your hands after going to the bathroom, before eating, before preparing food, after you come from outside, always wash your hands at least 20 to 30 seconds under running water and with soap. And the last point to reduce our, our stress, a stress is really important because stress um, can give us this uh, hormone, the uh, cortisol, that can suppress the effectiveness of our immunity, our immune functions. So it's important to reduce stress. We have to do whatever we can. We can do um, relaxing time. We can read. We can um, do other type of therapies to also um, breathing is really important to reduce our stress and um, also trusting God and have um, 
someone to share our problems is important and we have to try any technique that we can to reduce stress in our lives so we can be stronger. I like to share some therapies that can also help help to boost our immune system. And one of the ones that I use the most is hydrotherapy. The hydrotherapy is a system that you can uh, it uses hot and cold water on the surface of your body to change blood and leave lymph circulation and can increase the immune reaction. The one that I use the most and is really recommended for immunity is to use the cold meat and friction. It's a, it, this is a tonic friction. It's the application of cold water and frictions to produce a thermic and circulatory effect. It's important to always have a strong immune system, especially during these times. Yes, let's follow the therapy that was mentioned to strengthen our immune system and stay strong during these times. We can't wait to see you in the next video where we will talk about another interesting topic entitled Part 1 of Cancer Prophylaxis. Hope to see you there!